I remember um, CrossGen. Now, CrossGen Comics was a brand new publisher that kind of came out in the early 2000s. It says 1998 to 2004. I think it was early 2000 when I first started hearing about it and purchasing some of the books. I mean, I remember when these books first came out, they had their little run, but then when they came with their second wave of comics, they were everywhere. Trade paperbacks, mini small paperbacks that looked like covers of manga. Um, they had all of these wild and fun stories, great artwork, really dynamic stuff, and they went bankrupt in 2004, and they were just gone. So you have all of these really expansive growing universes, all of these interesting ideas, and they just kind of ended. They just kind of died. And they were really cool stories. It's like, I really, really like CrossGen Comics. Um, when they first kind of came out in the first wave, they started with some of the more popular books like um, Sigil. This was the very, very first stuff and it was you know space pirates and space marines and all of them had not all of them but the main character and some others had these power on their chest called a sigil now the sigil is actually the cross gen logo and what tied the universe together in these very interesting ways is that random people throughout the galaxy galaxies i guess were just kind of chosen they got these sigils in different places their hand their chest their head and as a result people were granted these different powers and that's what kicked off a lot of the stories in the different universes and every cross-gen uh, book kind of took place on a different world or a different planet or a different mini galaxy or something like that so if they're in space um, like sigil he had his own corner of the galaxy and then eventually it was supposed to be this big, ever expansive universe. And it was in a lot of ways. But even though the artwork was so fun and different, they just, I guess they just ran out of, ran out of cash. Um, the ones that I collected, I collected, um, hold on. I collected Meridian. I had a first like five or so, no, no, first three issues of Meridian um, which gives you this wonderful anime vibe where the the character, she has a sigil and then her evil like uncle has one too and it was just um, her dealing with like being this um, locked up princess but who now gets granted magic powers and she has a sigil on her forehead. Just some of the fun little a uh, cool story that happened out of here. And another one that I collected was uh, Scion, where in his world, people were using like swords and sorcery and he got a sigil on his arm and his opponent got one too. And it was a nice little adventure story with him trying to make his way uh, back home to, um, you know, his evil big brother and stuff like that. Really great stories. But... I can't. I don't remember how many of these I had, but this was the one that I would that I liked the best, and that I, I, I came for the most. Um, I would always pick this one up and read it first out of all the books that I brought home. But I think about that, and like the, it's gone. I never finished the story. You can find the trade paperbacks. Yeah, I had this issue too. Hold on. There you go. I had this issue too. Do I have to? Yeah, I guess I can't really scan up with these, but um, even though this tales were so much fun and unique, I really learned the price of trying to run a comic book business and hearing the bankruptcy really threw me. Um, the really popular one that I wish I collected was Sojourn. I wish I just had issue one and two. I could have. I just never did. This is when they revamped a lot of their stuff and they came in with their second line. And the Sojourn comics had slightly better art, more detailed art. Um, the, the, the tone was a little bit more mature. So um, you could pull in a slightly older teenage audience. And um, 
this was the most popular book for a while that they had. Um, especially when you would go get it second hand. And I guess she was like writing with pirates and stuff. But I wish I had bought this one too because I just think the art is spectacular. This was a great, these would, see these are issue number ones that I wish I still had. I wish I still had Runaways number one. Stuff like that is really encouraging me to look at everything different. Um, but I'm terrified because not everything is going to be The Walking Dead. Some stuff is going to turn into Sojourn and be worth nothing. My favorite among all of these was Negation. I think that this is an amazing achievement in storytelling. It was probably one of the, great, the greatest comic books I've ever read. And it's outstanding. Outstanding. So I still have the first like three or four volumes of Negation on my shelf behind me right now. And... Um, I could read that a million times, but it's so clever, it's so much fun, it's so smart the way they tied in uh, what was going on within the, that comic book world, and the writing is just really, really good. It's one of those stories that not many people are going to remember um, or talk about going forward, but it's really going to inspire other creators to do something great. There's a lot of indie comic book creators that inspired the creators now um, to do their own thing. Like Kirkman was inspired by a lot of indie comic creators and then he was like, all right, I'm gonna get in that industry. And he's like, oh, these are the people I grew up with. It's gonna be fun and family and all this stuff. And um, uh, they were there to support him because he was such a fan. And he built off of what they put and then someone's gonna build off of what he put too. I mean, that's the way it goes. Um, so yeah. Very cool stuff. I'm worried about some of these unique comic books, but you never know, man.